Download complete. Initiate playback. Playback. <laughs> Enjoy the show. <laughs> What's up, Time Keepers? Me Time Gamer here, finally back for another episode of the Me Time Gamer Podcast, episode 21. I hope everybody's going well. Sorry for the two weeks without podcast. Hopefully, you guys are not too mad at me. Pretty please don't be too mad at me. <laughs> yeah, I just, I didn't know what to do. Uh, I've uh, been quite busy and not feeling up to it the last couple of weeks, so I was like, eh. Even this one, I'm, uh, I'm going to, it's going to be a bit later than usual, so, uh, uh, it happens and we all have stuff in our life that we go through and then we 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 push stuff aside like my podcast but that's neat and that's neither here or there uh hopefully you guys everybody's going well it was uh finally we're we're past the tell of uh, e3 so news is slowly starting to come back up uh there was there was some news last week that i might mention real quick there's actually one news that i'm going to talk about this week that was more for last week's podcast if i had the time to to record one but i didn't so i'm gonna bring it back because it's one i talked about a lot in the past but uh yeah so of course as usual the the way the show goes is where i'm gonna start off by talking about what i what i have played in the last couple weeks i guess i'm gonna go with that and also uh we're gonna go with the main news that i found uh, interesting in the last week or so and of course then i will be uh presenting a kickstarting it uh which i'll explain when we get to that point but of course before we get into that we uh then sorry then we conclude sorry i got up not too long ago so it's going to be a bit another one of those podcasts still good don't worry about it uh yeah so after at the end uh, after the kickstarting it then we end the podcast as usual so short little podcast nothing to major but of course before we start that of course if you want if you're listening to the podcast you can listen to the video form at youtube.com for slash me time gamer and also if you're watching the youtube format you can catch the podcast everywhere uh pretty much stitcher itunes uh and a couple pretty much everywhere there's podcasts i'm there so definitely go check that out and uh that's pretty much it so of course you can follow me everywhere me time gamer twitter, twitter facebook instagram and youtube all right. I, oh, yeah. We'll start off by talking what I've been playing. So lately, I've been playing. Um, uh, I was. I bought. There was a sale on PlayStation Four for Adrift. Now this game came out last year and it caught my attention, but I found it too expensive for what it looked like. And now for this week, it was two ninety nine Canadian. So I guess like one ninety nine American. If you guys, I don't know. I don't know if it's still on sale. I don't think so. But uh, yeah, I've just decided to try that game for some for some reason. I've been interesting in uh, a lot more in space uh, the last couple of months or something like that. Just like listening to stuff uh, like audio dramas, podcasts, more and more. And uh, so I've been listening to more uh, uh, space, deep space stories, audio drama, and stuff like that. And uh, I finally decided to try out this game. And believe me, this game is really fun. Uh, the mission structure is pretty simple: is go get go get one thing at the other end of the broken space station, come back, fix it, then go f- a couple more times. I'm not done. I, st- I think I still have another hour or so of gameplay to do before I'm done. And another interesting game I've been playing besides that one is uh, Life is Strange. So Life is Strange, you guys know Life is Strange season one is completed. I will be completing. I'm going to be starting episode four probably sometime after I'm done recording this podcast, after I'm done editing and all that stuff. I will be playing that. But that game is really interesting. I really, I'm really enjoying the story. When I played it back when episode one came out, that was pretty interesting when I played it back then. Uh, it's uh, very high school driven, um, very weird problems mixed with a weird uh, supernatural event happening. And uh, if you like those kind of stories where you want to feel like you're back in high school again <laughs> or uh, college or whatever, uh, it's pretty much the game. It's pretty I, I enjoy the story. The story is pretty exciting. Uh, episode three at the end, of episode three, like I won't say what happens. Definitely go check out my video. But um, the game is definitely uh, it takes a weird twist there. And at the end, of episode three, and you're like, what the fuck's going to happen? 
uh yeah i played episode one when it came out but i never touched it after that and then i played episode two and three and now i'm gonna play episode four pretty soon and i can't wait to play it it's actually pretty fun of course if you want to watch me play um life is strange usually every episode of life is strange i've been trying to stream them so far so good so you can definitely check out episode four check it out the, if you're listening to podcast as soon as this come it comes out i'll be playing it this weekend for the weekend of whatever the fucking date is today uh the weekend of july 7th uh so definitely check that out if it's if you're listening to this uh two to three years later well i'm sorry <laughs> it's too late now but you can definitely go check out the playthrough and of course talking about twitch uh what i've been doing lately is i'm taking uh, a lot of my videos and putting them on their twitch upload system and been running vodcast so if you guys can't like i don't I'm trying to find time to stream a lot more, but Vodcast is actually helping me that I can stream my old videos. Uh, sometimes I'm there in the chat, sometimes I'm not while I'm editing and stuff like that, so I don't always have the time to talk to you guys while I'm there. But the Vodcast is running. I usually run uh, two, three Vodcasts during the day. They're about four or five hours long each. Uh, usually one in, one's running right now while I'm recording the game Kona I recorded about a couple months ago. It's um, uh, I, the the Vodcast is playing the full playthrough of that. If not, uh, right now the uh, I don't have a lot of full playthroughs right now. But right now I, I uploaded. I got um, the Last of Us Left Behind. That's about a two, three hour vodcast, and then I have Quantum Break. If you're if you if you catch the vo the vodcast for Quantum Break, keep in mind those are old videos where I'm not like I'm more like hello, my name is Me Time Gamer. Welcome to so it's <laughs> it's a lot more robotic, less more energetic like my recent videos. And I just I just it's uh it's fun to watch old videos like that because you actually see a lot of uh, progression. I uh, when I was uploading them, I was like, do I actually want to upload these videos because this is really not the quality that I do today. But at the same time, I was like, it's still a fun playthrough I had. It's still like I explained it when uh, there's an automatic um command uh, automatic timer on my chat that every 15 minutes it says this I, I put on like this is your old videos. It doesn't represent the current quality, but these are still a this is still a fun play playthrough that I did. So yeah, I also have uh, Resident Evil 7, which is the most popular one. I got a couple, just playing the vodcast, I've noticed that, that that alone has given me a lot of follows. Even if I'm not there, people are still interacting with, with each other. There's not always a lot of people in the chat, but when there is, there's some time interacting. So yeah, so I'll, I'll definitely try to tr stream, twit uh, stream more. Uh, I really want to get into that, of course, but I also want to maintain all my videos that I do daily or try to do daily, which you guys noticed uh, when I mentioned in the vlog last week. And I'm going to mention now, like I've, the last couple of weeks I've been busy, been not feeling too good all the time. So videos, uh, I missed a couple of days and stuff like that, but no worries. I'm, I'm really trying hard. Like, even today, I'm recording a bit later than I should. So the video today will probably be late, but not the podcast version because that's pretty easy to edit. Anyway, that's it for what I'm playing and watching. Of course, I'm going to be playing Until Dawn, which is a free PlayStation, uh, one of the free PS Plus game for this month. So I downloaded it and probably going to be playing this weekend and releasing videos next week for it with a mix of uh, I got one or two more playthroughs of Adrift and then uh, the last two episodes of uh, Life is Strange. So I'll be mixing all that together, making it all work together, and uh, we'll go from there. So without further ado, let's jump right into the news. All right, so this week news is not is a bit sparse. Like, it's a bit weird when I'm talking about news because I I don't cover like random shit. Like I like I don't try to like go into the depths of the, this of some news article that doesn't make sense. And at the end, you're like, oh my god, this is so fucking boring. I'm just trying to find you guys exciting news that I I personally found interesting and just explain my opinion on it and go from there. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. So the first one uh, is uh, going to be a bit of, uh, I would say, semi-sad. Uh, this is an article by PC Gamer written by Joe Donnelly. And uh, so basically, Five Nights at Freddy's 6 gets cancelled. Uh, so the news article goes as follows. The Five Nights at Freddy's creator Scott Cowan uh, Scott Ca Cotton, sorry, has confirmed that the next FNAF game has been cancelled despite having spent the last month dropping hints regarding what it might be until. Uh, taking to a Steam community update post, Cotton explains that he simply no longer wants to work on the game and has been neglecting other things in his, in his life for the sake of trying to keep up with mounting expectation. 
Uh, Kawuna highlights the move does not mark his departure from the game development, nor does it mean he's abandoning the Five Nights at Freddy's series. He says, I want to get back to what made the ga game making enjoyable in the first place. In fact, the first game that I'd like to make would be something for you guys. Uh, remember Foxy Fighter from Update 2? I love working on that game. It was a lot of fun and it took a lot of pressure off me knowing that it was just for the, fa the fans of the game. That's the kind of project I'd like to work on again. Maybe I'll try my hands at a, pizzer uh, at a pizzeria tycoon game. Who knows? That would be kind of funny. Uh, the point is that it would be something for fun and something for the fans. So the article continues a bit, but that's a bit sad that uh, FNAF 6 is not coming out. I'm not personally, I haven't played any of the, the Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, I've watched a lot of uh, YouTubers and streamers play the games. They're they're pretty fun games. I found it very simplistic, but I found also that uh, uh, Scott S Scott Cotton or Cowan uh, was releasing them very quickly for the like, I guess under pressure he was releasing them very quickly, and I found that as the game progressed, like the quality of the game went down as it went down. But that's just me. The game still looks very interesting. I know some of you fans out there of the of the series are very. Um, very vocal about the series are very passionate about the series and i get that the game is even if the game the quality of the game itself doesn't doesn't for me personally seem to continue all the time the game still looks looks very very fun to play i still recommend if you guys want to go play all the other ones definitely go play them of course and yeah so that's a bit a bit of a bummer for the the, the fans of five nights at freddy's of course like he says he's not he's not he might do standalone games uh, I've read in another article in the past that he was talking about making like like uh, parallel games and of course there's all the fan games that like take the formula of this game and make make it their own or something like that which eh, so so not some of them are not good some of them are good but anyway you can be the judge of that and that's it for the five nights at Freddy news the next article of news uh, fucking PC gamer with your ad get away from me all right next the next little piece of news is from IGN.com and is written by, if I can find who the fuck, why the fuck does you, why do you not put who wrote your article at the top of the page? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, so I guess that nobody wrote that <laughs> article. So our, the first, the, the, the next article of news is concerning Pokemon Go. There's going to be an anniversary event on July, uh, for July 2017. The article goes as follow, uh, to celebrate the one year anniversary of Pokemon Go's launch, a small birthday event launch 1 p.m. July 6th and will run up to July 24th. This is separate from the live event Pokemon Go Fest in Chicago on July 22nd. During the Pokemon Go anniversary event, all Pikachu discovered in the wild will be wearing Hash's hat for the Pokemon anime. A special discounting anniversary box is also available in the in-game shop and contains many items especially helpful for raids. It take, contains six help, six max revive, two raid passes, 20 ultra balls, six incubators, and it costs uh, and it costs uh, 1,200 Poke coins. So that's that's it for the article. The article wasn't that long. It's uh, it's it's not a big piece of news. It's just saying if you guys are still playing Pokemon Go. There's another stuff coming out, and I know I'm. I sometimes still play. My wife still sometimes play. Rarely nowadays, but I still on the occasion we go out for fun with the kids and get, and just collect Pokemon's. And my daughter's just on her tablet collecting Pokemon's, and it's all fun. It, it's just a small little activity. You go to a park and stuff like that, and they play at the same time, and have fun. And yeah, so if you guys are still playing that, that's a little event. Another Pikachu uh, model can be found out there in the wild. Uh, the next one I was able to find, article of news that is, is uh, the f uh, first Minecraft. Uh, this one is by, the article is written by GameSpot and is written by Patrick Fowler. Uh, so the title is First Minecraft Story Mode Season 2 Trailer Released. So of course uh, the article goes as follows. Minecraft Story Mode Season 2 is just a few days away. Uh, it's coming out on July 11th from, from when this article from whenever, what are we today? So in a couple of days, yeah. Uh, but developer Telltale Games is giving players an early look at the game. Season 2 is divided into five episodes and continues the story of Jesse and his friends from the first season, Minecraft Story Mode. In an episodic adventure game, episode 1 called Hero in Resistance kicks off the sequel story with, and will be released digitally on July 11th for PS4, Xbox One, and PC and mobile devices. With the physical re release coming in the fall, check out the trailer for episode 1 above. And then there's a small quote from Telltale Games saying, A new adventure beckons uh, 
sending Jesse on a quest to the darkest depths of the world and beyond, joined by a motley band of familiar faces, fortune hunters and sometimes enemy, and one deeply disobedient llama. Okay. <laughs> there will be a tough choice. T there will be tough choices, peril aplenty, and no shortage of people who will remember that. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, I usually tell tell games say that. So that's fun if you're a fan of Minecraft. I haven't played the first season, but it does look very interesting. It's more, I guess, it, it, the trailer... If I compare the trailer to what the other trailers of the first season, it's more of what you guys usually like of the Telltale series. Of course, I don't know, I don't know if, if uh, like they updated their um, their engine uh, anytime uh, recently. That's usually the big uh, the big problem with Telltale's games is they're they're popping these games out so fast that they don't have time to what seems that to update their games. Uh, that's weird in their. Uh, Uh, season 2 trailer is actually a tag for, P for Xbox 360 on there. That's pretty weird on the trailer. I don't know if it's actually coming up for 360. That would be kind of weird. But anyway. So yeah, if, if the trailer is out, hopefully if you're watching the YouTube version at youtube.com forward slash metimegamer, you can definitely go check out the trailer as it's playing while I'm talking right now or I already played a couple minutes ago. And that's it for this news. Just a re release trailer uh, for Dad. The game's coming out pretty soon. I guess that was announced a couple of months ago. I, I I sometimes don't always follow uh, Telltale games because they're just like continually continuously coming out, and the people play whatever one they want. Sorry about that. So the last little article of news. This is a, one of the older ones. One of the older ones. Um, from last week that I wasn't unable to talk about uh, is this one. This article is from Polygon and is written by Mike, uh, Michael McWerther. Sorry if I said that wrong. Uh, so basically it is Modern Warfare Remastered finally gets a standalone release date. Uh, the article goes as follow. Activision will release a standalone version of Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered available both physically and digitally on June 27th. So by this time it's already out. Uh, the game will be available first on PlayStation 4 with uh, Windows PC and Xbox One version of Follow. I guess the, place, the this PlayStation uh, uh, working together with Activision is still a thing. Uh, the standalone release will cost $39.99 or I'm, I'm assuming $49.99 for Canada. And will not include the Modern Warfare Remastered Variety Map Pack. Of course they're going to gouge you for more money on that. Uh, Activision did not provide release date for Windows PC and Xbox One version of the game. So the, the game's out, so they finally decided to release the long-awaited uh, Modern Warfare Remastered, which was an, which was released with uh, Infinity Warfare last year, if I remember. Was it? Yeah, Infinity Warfare. And then they were saying, oh, the game's never coming out alone, of course, as uh, as I mentioned last time I did the, was it the first, uh, back when I did um, last week's gaming news, Uh, yeah, they, they were, I think it was the first episode I did of that. They were saying, uh, don't release the game. And then the, the trailer got like a uh, hundred thousand dislikes compared to a uh, thousand likes and stuff like that. And people were going crazy for what they didn't understand why the game wasn't going to be a standalone game because they, of course you want to make money. So people are releasing their, <laughs> they're releasing what they, what everybody wants behind something that people probably want less of. And of course, as I said, is like they, they were saying that they weren't going to release the, the game on standalone. And of course, as most people predicted, is like either they're going to do it soon or they're going to do it later. And what seems to be almost a little bit a little bit less than a year later, of course, they released the game alone, uh, and now everybody can play it. It's only I'm, I'm assuming it's only available on PS4 right now. But uh, yeah, so there's not much else. To, there's not much else to say about that. It's good that they finally decided to release it. I guess they had a lot of demand to get it released on its own. The game, the game does look awesome. I, by now, everybody has played the remastered. If you played the first Call of Duty, I haven't, but because I'm not a Call of Duty fan. But Modern Warfare is one of those series that I did play. I played the second and third one. I never had a chance to play the first one, unfortunately, because it was just I think it was just on an older console. Never, I was never like big into first-person shooters before. I, I'm still not today. And I, I had noticed that when I played Modern Warfare 2, 3, and Battlefield 4, if I remember correctly. But yeah, the game is out. You can definitely, uh, you can definitely hold your horses and stop complaining that Activision doesn't listen to you. Of course, they're coming out later in the year with Destiny 2, if I remember correctly. A couple more games. So good on them. Finally listening to the fans for this. Um, uh, I might give it a try. If it, it would complete my knowledge of the series of Modern Warfare. I did watch a couple gameplays of this. 
Uh, it looked very interesting, but I would definitely want to try it more on myself. And that's going to do it for the news. And now we're going to be moving on to kickstarting it. I'm Mr. Meeseeks. Look at me. All right. So this week, uh, if you don't, before I start, if you don't know what kickstarting it is, basically I reach into the depths of Kickstarter and in or Indiegogo or any website that looks like that. Uh, that does the same basic thing and I go find a small video game project that has a lot of time left uh, and I promote it to you guys so you guys can, can go give it your hard earned money so you get, you guys can get a new brand awesome game instead that you help support the game in the future and for that will come out in the future sorry I didn't explain it that, that well this time <laughs> usually I, I have it pat down but this time I didn't I guess so, of course, uh, the game I'm going to be going uh, on this week is from Indiegogo, and it's called Ancient Cities. So, basically, Ancient Cities, uh, the general the general blurb for the game is Ancient Cities, a survival strategy city builder game. So, basically, it takes a sort of the aspect of a isometric uh, survival game, but at the same time, there it, it transforms into, it, it does have... A wide part being, boy, well, I would assume the most part of it being a uh, RTS, a real-time strategy game, where you like sort of a uh, Age of Empires or uh, Red Alert or stuff like that. So basically, let's go into the overview description of the game. So, ancient cities, survival strategy city build, survival strategy city builder. Starting with a no nomadic tribe, you will have to guide your people through the Neolithic Revolution, discovering and improving technology, managing resources and population, facing enemies, and ultimately building the most fantastic city of the antiquity. Uh, please, if you're a Kickstarter backer, check the case. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Uh, blah, blah. Then the story, uh, Ancient Cities Survive... Ancient Cities, a survival strategy city build game based on ancient time, currently being developed by Uncasual Games. Uh, starting in the Neolithic era, you will have to guide your people through generations, discovering and improving technology man and managing resources. Sorry about that. I have the burps for some reason. And the game's coming out on PC. So that's basically what the game is. Of course, if you're on YouTube.com, if you're watching the video format on YouTube.com or slash MeTimeGamer, I'm playing the trailer for the game. So looking at the trailer, the game does look very cool. Uh, like the description says, you have to guide your people before even starting, like building your city off the bat. You have to start off by making your people survive in the prehistoric ages or Neolithic ages, age, and go from there. And it, it does look very interesting uh, game to play. I just like the concept that you have to make them survive before you actually start building the city. And then, of course, it starts with straw huts, and then it can, I think it goes up to, like, uh, uh, sort of semi, sem not cement, but, like, um, uh, with the trailer, uh, it's a bit weird, the trailer goes out, like, actually, buildings, and then it keeps going from there. Each character has their own, um, let's go into the features there. Each character has their own unique, like, needs and wants, um, well, needs and wants is pretty much the same thing, and skills that they offer and stuff like that. Um... Let's see if I can find just a short feature description here. And I'll find it. Give me a second, guys. Looking through the depth. Uh, history of the project. Features. Where the hell is the features? It's way at the bottom. Okay, there it is. Uh, current features. This game is a Sea World Simulator where you can change time progression from normal speed to ser several time lapse velocities. This is what we really have, but still be polished. Uh, in house 3D random bubble. Okay, this is. Uh, Okay, yeah, uh, farming system, wild animal life and plant cycle of li life, weather simulation based on real data, simulated seasonal cycle, simulated day and night cycle, procedural world generation, in-house 3D render thing, okay, that's it, uh, character attributes, family tr tree for citizens, resource collecting, collection and storage, step-by-step uh, -step structure building and effects, character attributes, AI to some extent, AI to some extent, Including pathfinding and job selection, citizen base basic needs like eat, drink, sleep, and rest. Tech system: some idea for each type of tech. T test the, the tech, plant, animal, and building. Decay of resources and building. Okay, now that's pretty interesting. If they like the you you have to maintain your building as time progresses. That's pretty fun. Uh, wildlife, what else? Uh, I read something here that made me. Uh, family tree system reminds me a bit of. Um, if you guys played the, the first Tropico, 
had some uh, a rough version of that where you can which which uh, like if you uh, you click on a character it can tells you over time it tells you who's the mom and dad of, of the the character you're currently looking if he's not an immigrant uh, recent immigrant or anything like that so that's pretty interesting that there there's so many features that uh, I don't know if it's a no they have a team there uh, the list at the bottom is it's a good team size so definitely I'll leave a link in the description of uh, the, the the podcast uh, Sorry, I'm, I'm, why am I looking for words right now? Sorry, um, we're we're almost done. Uh, I'm gonna leave the, the 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 link to the Kickstarter project in the uh, podcast um, uh, post on the MeTimeGamer.com, of course, and of course you can also find the link of the game. You can also find the link to the game uh, in the YouTube video at youtubecom slash MeTimeGamer. Go to the description and you'll see it below. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this week's episode, episode 21 of the Me Time Gamer podcast. We finally made it. I finally was able to record one. I'm so happy. I was debating today to see if I was going to record one or not because it was getting down to the wire. But I guess the video format is just going to be a little, little later than usual. And I'm going to round off the week for this week. Uh, of course, if you guys want to support, uh, you want to help me out, you can follow me everywhere. Me Time Gamer, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. If you guys want to find out the podcast, of course, if you're watching the video format, you can definitely do so on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, uh, and all the other podcatcher that you guys can be using. Uh, definitely go. Also, when you're there, please rate and review the podcast. It will really help out. Uh, tell me what I can improve. If you don't like the intro, uh, I don't know, anything you want. And of course, if you want to support the podcast, you can do so. Uh, you can go to patreon.com for slash me time gamer, and you can donate there. I think if I remember, it's a $2.99 uh uh whatever that is i don't remember why my i hate when i start blanking on names when i'm trying to talk too fast that's one thing i notice is i do talk too fast sometimes and I'm, i apologize for that and sometimes i'm uh, i quite i seem like i'm babbling on for no reason but yeah you can go support me on uh, patreon.com and of course you can follow me everywhere i already said that and uh what else oh of course if you go to the website go definitely check it out i uh, have updated the website it looks less like a blog and more like an actual website where you can find all the social media I, I'm on. Uh, you can uh, everywhere you can support me. Uh, there's also an affiliate page if you want. You guys want to use an Amazon link uh, and help support uh, me from there. And I think that's going to be pretty much it. I, I always forget. I, I seem to always forget stuff at the end. Oh yeah, as I'm saying that. Of course, if you want to, uh, if you want to leave a comment, critique, or you want to have. You want to say something, a topic you want to talk about, you want me to talk about on the show, you can do so leaving a, sending me an email at podcast at metimegamer.com. And also, if you want to support the podcast or you want to sponsor the podcast, you can do so at contact at metimegamer.com. And I will get to you very shortly, as fast as I can. And uh, that's it for the show. So thank you so much, guys, for watching and listening. Of course, if you're watching the video format, thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much guys for watching or listening and I will see you in the next podcast. Keep on keeping on. <laughs>